Yeah, Trump Week, Friday at 11, every Friday at 11, with Tim Apicella and Cynthia Sinclair. This is one of our most important shows, actually, I must say, because uh, you have to watch the subject not only every, every week, but every day, not only every day, but morning, noon, and night, uh, as you watch our democracy deteriorate under this president. So um, we have an agenda of uh, special, special categories this week. And <laughs> Cynthia, would you lead off and tell us what the categories are? are one by one, and Tim, Tim and I, and tell us your nomination for what event hits what category. Okay. okay. Uh, and then uh, Tim and I will, uh, will, will, uh, will compare notes on whether your nomination <laughs> should prevail. Okay, that sounds like a plan. Uh, number one is the most outrageous action. And that for me would be that Trump claims total exoneration when both the Mueller report and Barr's report in his letter said the exact opposite. It said this does not exonerate. Right? It says we can't, um, we don't have enough to charge him, to indict him, but he's not exonerated either. And yet the first thing he says out of his mouth is, I'm exonerated. So, Tim, what do, you, what do you think about that? Does that fit, or are there other things that are more outrageous? Uh, that fits, but I'll also give a part B to that, and that is Barr's proclamation that spying, the word spying took place on the 2000 and, um, 16 presidential campaign against President or candidate Trump. And I think that's an outrageous, uh, outrageous Without any statement, statement of evidence. Without any evidence. shred of evidence. Right. He played right into Trump's hand as a, a well-heeled lackey by, by using that word choice. Yeah, that's why we Absolutely. entitled this show with the real bar, please stand up. Right. You no, know, it really seems like bar is just a, is a mouthpiece for Trump. And um, he got confirmed, as opposed to all those other department heads that are active, where you don't you acting, don't, acting, where right. you don't need to confirm them. And, and so, in this case, uh, they managed to get uh, Barr through. But he's really being a, a mouthpiece for Trump. It's really awful. a lot of people are disappointed because they thought there would be some impartiality to yeah. the position, yeah. and the gravity and the importance of that position that there would be some impartial impartiality. And that doesn't seem to be the case at this time. Yeah, no, good luck you... with that. There's no impartiality. He's just a mouthpiece. And what's worse, may I add, that this is, this is only out of the box. We're only a few weeks into Barr's administration, so to speak. It's going to get worse. You're going to see this happen. It's already clear that he is not his own man, um, that he has no backbone. He has no independent thinking going on. He's merely working for the president, not the country, in violation of his oath every day. And let me add that one of the other elements in our discussion today uh, is the, in, uh, the, the investigation and I guess the indictment of some fellow who worked for the Obama administration. And uh, they're, they're proceeding against him. And that's by the Department of Justice, not by the FBI itself. So what's happening is Barr is just doing everything that Trump wants him to do. And that's one of the other things. Yeah. Well, we have to remember that Barr wrote a 19-page op-ed that he where he totally said, I, you know, a president can't be indicted. He ripped on the Mueller investigation, all of those things. He, it was basically was like he was pages? applying for four the job. Pages, no, the no, four page is the earlier. one that he put out after the Mueller report. It was his uh, resume. Talking about his, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah long but before right. he it was, got appointed. It was op-ed, but really it was a resume to be selected as right. an appointee right. for an attorney general. That's how I looked at yeah, it. That's it was, how I it was sometimes resume. things exactly. are exactly as they seem to be. Right. Okay, so, all right. Well, hang on. Now. Let me just, you know, hey, you know we got to look at fairness and fairness. make sure. Because uh, Barr did retract a bit by saying the word spying. He said uh, in front of Senator Schatz during the uh, testimony. Our own Senator Schatz. Yes, Our we all know head. Senator Schatz. And in front of Senator Schatz, he said um, unauthorized uh, investigation. Surveillance. Surveillance. Thank you. Yeah. Unauthorized uh, surveillance. Well, that's president. because Schatz said, wait a minute, that's yeah, so, a really high-charged word you got there, buddy. So, hold on. Yeah, so he did moonwalk back uh, mm -hmm. the spying word, but, the but terminology. This is all about Trump's paranoid concern that, the, uh, that they were spying on him. Right? Well, he adopted that conspiracy. Wait, we're getting yeah, ahead of ourselves. Yeah. 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 That's okay. number uh, four. <laughs> so, going back, to, <laughs> Go going back to Mueller, I just want to make a couple of thoughts about Mueller. Right. So we haven't seen the redacted report yet. No. Uh, uh, Tim and I have a bet. What's the date? Up, day? Uh, 28th. That's correct. Uh, and uh, if it doesn't come in by the 28th, uh, 
he buys me a fat lunch somewhere, I'm telling you. A nice one. And vice versa. I'll, I'll buy him a big lunch. Get in on if this it does. Wait a minute. High's Steakhouse. There you no. go. They have lunch. <laughs> they have lunch there. And for anyone listening who doesn't, you know, travel to Hawaii much, High's is a first-class place. We might have to I, negotiate I can, High's. I can taste the steak now. <laughs> anyway, so, okay, when we see it, we're going to see it, I predict, you know, highly redacted. We're not going to be able to tell you know, much about a lot of things. And the redactions will cover not only what legitimately could be redacted under, you know, an agreed approach, but a lot of other stuff, and we'll never know. There'll be a big fight about the redaction if we get the report. Well, not well okay, you know, can I just go over the redactions report? real quick? Because we should know what those redactions are going to cover, right? according to Barr. Yeah, let's, let's, yeah, let's listen. Yeah. Very That's... quick. Uh, any grand jury material, uh -huh. number one. Number two is any information on ongoing investigations. Right. Uh -huh. Now, these two make very good sense to me. Yeah. Number three, um, information about sources and methods. Okay. And four is material that compromises peripheral figure, figures and their privacy rights. Hmm. Now, that one, I'm privacy like, rights? Is that a protected, you know? Yeah. But the thing is, you can take those categories and expand them into you know, the whole damn report. I'm sorry. Right. Well, remember, the whole report, all the pages were stamped confidential. So right from the get-go, he had classified everything as something that shouldn't be shared. Yeah. Okay, well, well I, I got it. But those are the three categories. What about the New York Times article That's about right. I 1050? Wanted to, so, is that okay, where we are going? Can you summarize that for our viewers? Well, um, in the Patriot Act and the National Security Act after 9-11, right, they, um, a couple of the sections in those bills that went through, uh, one is, is it 1040 or is it 1050? I, I can't remember exactly, but at any rate, it makes it so that any intelligence information or investigations must be, and they even said they changed the wording to make sure it was very specific, that they cannot withhold it from, they shouldn't, they don't get to redact the um, grand jury, they don't get to, they don't get to redact so anything. The statute says not they may get, be, but must be must disclosed, be disclosed to, to the House Intelligence, Intelligence Committee. Committees. Okay? Must this be. is a matter of law adopted, signed uh, into law some time ago. Right. No question that this report covers those kinds of things. Right. And no question that the Intelligence Committees need all this information. Because right. remember what the report was all about. It was about Russian spying uh, Russian involvement um, in our in our election system. That's what it was about, and mm -hmm. um, so the, you know the statute is very clear. It's not even a question of subpoena. Right? The they don't Times even article. have to ask for it. They should get it. It should it already should be automatically there. get it. Meanwhile, the House hasn't even subpoenaed yet yeah. to right? get this report, and it we're all waiting. You know, Lord Fauntleroy, we're all waiting as gentlemen, you know, for a report which which uh, which I feel. <laughs> Either isn't coming or it's going to be redacted out of existence. Oh, yeah. That's and which should be delivered in full to the House, under law, in full to the House. And what, why are we being this way? Why are we not going you know, straight it. to the point? I don't why understand are we not either. getting it? What, what is wrong with the House? And maybe Nancy uh, Pelosi is just being a little too kind here. I think maybe so she's too. waiting for Trump to step in something. What do you think, Tim? I don't know the answer to that question because. Um, I, I'm under the impression we're going to get that report before the 28th of April. Let's, I'm sticking to it. Um, now, it is to the degree of, of how many pages are redacted and whether or not these four categories, of which I just mentioned, were appropriate or not for redaction. A couple of them definitely seem appropriate to me. Yeah, no, right. but what about, that? that's nice for a committee other than the House Intelligence Committee. What about the House Intelligence Committee? They should see everything. They should see right. everything because they have a right. job to do. Right. And nobody else is and they nobody see, else. It's is not like they haven't job. seen sensitive information before in their capacity right. as, as members of that committee. Yeah. Well, they should have got it first. That's the thing. Why is Barr coming out with this public version first? We should be coming they should be coming out with the one for Congress first. Not the one for the public first. Well, I, I know I don't know uh, whether we have a category for that, but that I don't threatens think we do the, either, but well, that threatens also, the United States. That yes, also, it does. That also ties into uh, Robert Mueller's motivation on how he kind of punted the ball to Barr. Right. And, and he did Barr, Barr was unworthy punted, of it. He was he punted, unworthy of it. He punted, it. I think, his responsibility. But what are the motivations behind that? And there could be a few. Um, well, I hope we, we hope we find well, out soon. Well, I think he believed in The leaks haven't covered it just yet. 
And they you were know? friends, you know, so I think maybe he trusted well, and, Barr. And, and, and maybe, you know, again, we've said this before, maybe Mueller just said, look, I don't see this as criminal intent or it's able to file charges for criminal, you know, uh, charges. So therefore, you know, I didn't say it was. Now remember, an impeachment process, you don't have to be guilty That's right. of a crime or even in, in the, be indicted for a crime. Right. Uh, high crimes and misdemeanors. And so you don't have to have that as um, no, a, but the first an, stepping stone. An impeachment right. process is largely political. And, we don't, yeah. you know, the Democrats don't have the votes. They don't have the power to do it. That's why she doesn't want to do it right now. If but something was discovered that was, you know, seriously criminal, um, then, then she might Well, what if it. something's seriously discovered that isn't something you can indict a criminal charge to, but it's really serious as an action against the President of the United States that is contrary to the interests of the United States? Right. I mean, if they could it, impeach Clinton but, for it, having it, sex it, with it's some political girl, guys, to it's me political. it seems ridiculous. And if that both we houses can't do this don't them. agree, then right. it's not going to go anywhere. Right. And right. frankly, the Republicans uh, are in such moral disarray. That's my <sighs> term. I agree. I like that. That they, they would never go along with it. It would have to be a really, really like shooting somebody on Fifth Avenue, right? Really bad before the Republicans would even consider doing it. And um, that's, that's not happening yet. Yeah. Anyway, so okay. Um, that, to me, that threatens the republic uh, big time. Mm -hmm. Not I, not I only agree. in terms of the process that we're seeing, uh, the um, you know the de destabilization of Congress, destabilization of the uh, investigative committees, right. um, but also mm -hmm. our inability to deal with foreign threats. Right. We haven't dealt with it. Realize we have not dealt with it. Funding was cut. Funding was cut for the 2020 election for people to ensure that the Russians were not going to meddle in the, the 2020 election. He has cut staff. Oh, my God. Okay, so yeah. that, that was reported it's about three again. four It's going to happen. It is he's already He's setting up happening. his own re-election. Everything yes, he he's is. doing is setting up his own re-election. Absolutely. Re that's took the words right out of my mouth. What's your next category? The next category is the meanest action, which is, for me, reinstating the family separation policy. Um, even He even gave direct orders to not follow the judge's orders because the judge said you can't do that anymore, no. right? And now he's telling Border Patrol and ICE agents you just disregard that. That'd that. be a candidate for undermining our democracy. Oh, think? yeah, it telling, is. Telling his, all his of people to ignore federal or, uh, court orders? Yeah. Well, just before this program, um, an hour or so <laughs> before, uh, he was, it's alleged that he was dangling a pardon out to one of his um, administrative folks to disregard the law and close the border down, and if anything happens, I'll dangle out a pardon for you. Hi. That so is... that's being recorded right now. So I don't have all the details, but oh my gosh, we're, that's we're, scary. you know we're getting there. We're mm -hmm. getting to the impeachment level of of, of you know violation of the Constitution, where right. really everybody has to consider that the new normal is not enough to you know excuse what he's doing. It's getting worse and worse at I telling people I... to uh, ignore federal district judge right. orders. It's incredible. Um, he's, he's breaking down the government. We should yes, say before the new normal, we should start adding the word, the new deplorable normal. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah, the new know. normal doesn't describe really what's happening. I it's agree. the new deplorable normal. Okay, I have other thoughts about the meanest. There are other mean things. Um, well, we don't know, know all the mean things, really. There yeah. are mean things happening in the country um, with respect to, uh, you know, Hispanics and investigation in high schools about Hispanics and Terrible things happening in this country right. about that. We don't know about that. They're not being covered. There, there was coverage in the New York Times uh, a couple of months ago about some cases in uh, Long Island, I think. Right. Um, but, but there's other things happening we just don't know. However, we know that he's trying to uh, withdraw all aid uh, for, uh, from at least three countries in Central right. America. Uh, let those countries uh, sink, in, you know, sink into oblivion. Um, and uh, uh, instead of trying to build them up, and make them more comfortable to live in, if you can do that, um, he's making them less comfortable to live in. So more people will come to the border. So that, you know, he, he wants the people. Yes, it does. He wants the assault, thing, yeah. assault on the border. Right. So he's, he's withdrawing aid. I mean, that, it's mean on a number of levels, on that a number is. of levels. The other thing, and I, I, I guess this doesn't rise to winning the nomination for this category, but, you know, we had uh, a, a, a climate change uh, flood in Mozambique where a thousand people died the, the first time, the first day. Uh, it's in terrible shape. It's uh, a la, you know, Puerto Rico, maybe worse in terms of the loss of life. Have you heard the uh, United States uh, stepping in 
uh, offering any aid, sending anybody. All of Europe is trying to help them. A number of countries in Europe are trying to help them with money and resources and people and food and me medical and all this, but not the U.S. We have completely abandoned, abdicated uh, world leadership on, on uh, uh, you know, disasters of that nature. Well, this goes back to something you said a long time ago, um, and I'll try to rephrase this properly. Why would you want to send aid to a S whole country? Oh, yeah. Because that's how he <laughs> thinks about them. Yeah. Just right. as simple as that. I'm sorry to say yeah. it. Yeah. It's an S whole com com uh, country in his mind. And um, now, is he the one telling don't send any aid to them? I don't know that. Well, I can't but say he that. could, though, couldn't he? Right. Well, he, he's a one man band. He's running this government as a, a, a sole, sole proprietorship. Sole proprietorship. He could yes, snap he his is. fingers uh, just the way he could have snapped his fingers on Puerto Rico, but didn't. And then he lied about how much money he gave Puerto Rico. Ooh. Right. Let's and, go to the next. And how many people died. Right. He understated Thank you. that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's go to the next category. Next category. Can I say one thing that he, he quoted, though? Yeah. He tried to blame it all on Obama as far as the family separations. That's right. That's he said point. Obama was the one who built the cages. Obama is the one who separated children, which is a lie because really... Um, Obama did separate families sometimes, but only when there was abuse. It was very, you know, special circumstances. Or he drug. Never just they did said it. there was drug running. Was drug running, or they were, yeah, trying there was, to. There were two cases well, that there was separation. This was an automatic zero tolerance policy yeah. that Jeff Sessions yeah. announced uh, via Roman 13. After the fact. <laughs> out of the Bible. Right. Out of the Bible. Just justified it out of the Bible. And they did, they implemented this. With what, 3,000 separations? Right, and there's still uh, like 1,000 kids exactly, that they don't know. Well, that's, that's the thing, you know. I think you can make a huge distinction between whatever any previous administration did uh, and, and Trump is that under him, Homeland Security not only separated these kids, they kept no record of where these kids were going. Right. And they moved these kids thousands of miles away from their parents into odd places. And they still, even under court order, they cannot repatriate them because they don't know where they are. Right. I mean, that's, that's, that's criminal but right there. The people who have them know where they are, and they could bring them back. Why don't they? That's my question. The people um, who have them. They don't know who's, who's the child and who's the parent. I know. It's I mean, it's problem. hard, but they could try to get involved, and they're not. That's what's you know, the, to me. The thing that really got me under that quotation that you just read was, and I stopped it. Yes. I, oh, that's right. He, he was did trying to be the that. superhero saying, I stopped Major it. Major Right. But my favorite, my well, favorite they, thing I about I think that's why it wins the category. <laughs> my, my favorite thing about <laughs> immigration exactly. this week, if it, I don't know if immigration is a separate category, but my favorite thing is the sanctuary city threat. Oh my gosh, yeah, yes. He's going to send... He's going to bus everybody to a sanctuary he's gonna, city. He's going to bus all the uh, <laughs> would-be immigrants to uh, sanctuary city. San Francisco, here they come. <laughs> I'll teach you mayors a thing or two. You know, and yeah. why? He's, I, I heard exactly. him say this in his own voice. Why? Because he wants to punish the Democrats. It's the Democrats he's punishing in these sanctuary cities. Nancy Pelosi had a statement for that, how deplorable, how deplorable <laughs> using children as his political pawns to punish the Democrats for right. their opposition to his instant immigration demands you know, in his I, national emergency. I, I know that his I've never seen anything like this. firm, but, but it should become obvious that he's got some kind of organic brain thing going on. It, it goes beyond just a, a, a pathological personality. David uh, Jolly called the, him a sociopath. The yeah. former Republican senator from For Florida. Florida. Republican. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't hear that, but I <laughs> called him a social. But we see path. this. We see this on an increasing basis. He's right. More, um, more arrogant um, and more disconnected. Um, and I mean, you know, it's it's like he's his thought process is failing. Not that it was any good in the beginning. We did bad things when he was in business, but now it's really getting very pronounced. What's your next category? Okay. Uh, oh, number three is the action that most undermines democracy. And for me, it's Barr being Trump's AG instead of America's AG. Um, and I see him pushing the military, the police, the ICE, the Border Patrol, everybody to, well, how much will you do? What, what are you willing to do for me? And the people that aren't willing to do it, he gets rid of them. And he's like he's building now. If you look at how Hitler built the SS, that's exactly how he did it. He weeded out the people that would fight against him and just kept the guys that he knew were going to stand with him so that when it came time, he had his well, people. Let me use an example on this, this point. We have a Secretary of Homeland Security, Kirsten Nielsen. Now, I am not a cheerleader for this person as 
you know, implementing the zero tolerance policy right. and, and going along with it and promoting it and defending it. Well, just but keep finally, in mind that he's the one who did that. Yes. She was doing his, his bidding, bidding. Lest we forget. So finally she stepped in and said, I can't, I can't do the things you're asking me to do because it's against the law. So that was enough for him. You're out. You know, they were having conflicts before anyway. So that was enough for say, you're out. But what he's doing, he's, he's replacing so many different positions in Homeland Security or at a time where we don't need that vacancy. Right. And he's, he's going to pick folks that are loyal. And that is undermining the democracy Absolutely. of our country. Right. And he's, and he's going to treat them as acting instead of permanent. So, yeah. so you don't have to go with the Senate. Even the corrupt right. Senate yeah. you know, have won't even have a whack at them. And they can be completely unqualified. Now, I'm sure there's time limitations on, an, you know, on a temporary appointment. And I don't know what those time stipulations are, but it's enough time to get them to 2020, I bet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe so. Absolutely. And, and so yes. these appointments are happening left and right. And, you know, you have a hollowing out of all these agencies to only people who will abide by his instructions. You right. know, maybe we're assuming that he really wants to run for 2020. Maybe his agenda is, I'm just going to do what I can as a one-term president, no matter what, you know, how destructive it is to our democracy or against the Constitution. I'm just going to do what I can in my four years. And how, no. much, how much can I implement doing so? Remember the words of Michael Cohen. He will not go without a fight. He will not leave. And he cheated to win the first time. He's going to cheat so he can win the second time. Why would it change? It doesn't make sense that he would change and suddenly become well, somebody we can trust. When you clear out an entire agency of its, you know, senior administrators, yeah. and you know now you have what, five vacancies at mm -hmm. least at the top. Um, how does that agency function? I mean, it's not just border control. They've, we've had all sorts of security issues that need to function properly. And one of the things under Homeland Security is elections. That's one of the things that Homeland Security does. That's a good point. Does. That's a good and point. it's like, hmm, when I saw that, I was terrified. I thought, oh, my God. So he's completely controlling the agency that oversees elections. Or, or the implementation <laughs> of, of the votes in the election. Right. And for example, if he loses and if Michael Cohn is right and he doesn't want to go quietly, um, you know, who is going to take him physically out of the White House? Yeah. And, and well, by law, it's the U.S. Marshals. Yeah, right. <laughs> to yeah, say right. by law, as prescripted. But they're on his side now, so... They're listen to the president, you know, because yeah. he'll instruct them and all that. You know, and a, a thought just occurred to me is um, you know, we should not rule out the possibility that there won't be an election. Oh, come on. Yeah. I can't go with this. I, then well, there what will I, be what I'm saying, what I'm saying is <laughs> if you can manufacture a, an emergency at the border yeah. and use that to justify illegally moving money around among the government, you can also manufacture another emergency, an international emergency, a, a war, if you will, uh, a, a stupid war that he creates, okay, then say, well, we can't do this now. We have more important things to do. I have to prosecute this war. I have to save yeah, America. I understand this. I understand this concept. But even during wartime, World War II, we had elections. Did we not? Yeah. But, the but only way around it, during World the War only way around it is martial law. Martial law is the one way that he can get around having an election because he is all powerful and can do whatever he wants under martial law. So if he can somehow trigger a big uh, protest that erupts into fighting on the streets, which could easily happen. I don't know if you guys heard that. Um, it was a phone call that came in to Eric Swalwell, and it is, we're going to effing kill you. You are an effing blah, blah, blah. This is an effing war. You're dead. You're the first one. Don't you come for our guns because you're the first one we're going to shoot. This is a war. Who said and this? And we're ready. Some guy calls up, some Trumper guy calls, calls Eric up. Swalwell. Swalwell, yeah, and well, leaves that message for him. Okay, well, it, we know we have millions of people that I, I, share that, yes, share that philosophy. Terrifying. It shares that philosophy. And, you know, again, we know we have a lot of white nationalists out there, and mm -hmm. we know that they support this president because this president gives them a sympathetic ear. And a nod and a wink. We right. know that. Um, we shouldn't be surprised by these phone calls. Right. Um, what you don't want to have is another Timothy McVeigh right. uh, situation and innocent people right. die as a result of it. Right. So let's know that that's a given. Right. Well, it is. And the thing and is. And we need the, you know, our, our Department of Justice and our FBI to make sure that we don't have another Timothy McVeigh um, well, catastrophe. Well, Timothy McVeigh was a one guy. I think what he's been trying to push people towards anyway 
is for all those white nationalists to, to really rise up and if the Democrats try to stand up to Trump, all these white nationalists are going to fight back. Now we've got fighting in the streets. Now he can okay, declare. Okay, that's, that's called anarchy. And, you know, there's, there's remedies to handle anyone who's trying to promote anarchy. And, and re, you know, resurrection. That's another show. Insurrections. Yeah, that's no, a whole other show. show. I agree. We're talking about institutions that you assume will be effective right. to deal with anarchy. I, I, yes, that's and, true. And I don't know if you can make that assumption anymore. Right. Not the way things are going. What's right. your next category? Next category. Uh, the most notable distraction. And for me, that was Barr and Trump's claims of spying, yeah. which is a loaded word. We already sort of talked about it a little bit. Yeah. And, you know, um, I saw this one thing that I thought was really important. Um, the FBI, okay, at the election time, didn't do the spying. They were spying on Trump, blah, blah, blah. blah. They said not a word, right? The Russian investigation about Russia, all of it was very secret. The investigation was kept secret. Now, about Hillary Clinton, that was not kept secret. That was splashed all over everywhere. So obviously, the FBI was not out to get Trump. It's obvious. Well, but he's trying to claim it. All right. Well, more distractions. Do you agree with Cynthia on that? Yes, I do. I, I you know, I, I'm offended by the, the use of the word because. You can't do a surveillance without going through the FISA courts. Right. You can't go through any of this surveillance uh, illegally. And if it is illegal, then it's fine. You know, but that's not how this thing happened. Right. Um, you even had the Republicans, the gang of eight, that saw these, these FISA warrants. And you know, they didn't protest it. They didn't say this is illegal. Three times, this wasn't spying. Right? Yeah. So you know, again, Trump has gotten a hold of the message. And he's gotten in front of the media. And he is, you know, he's the pipe piper on all this. These lies. Right. And right. the media needs to call it out a little bit more right. stronger, I, I think. Agree. Strongly right. call it right. out. The media has to do has to do an analysis on everything and they don't have time. The dots. They can't. Because right. he's right, keeping him busy. Yeah. Um, okay, next one. I'd like to make one up and insinuate one here. <laughs> okay. And that's this is um, your favorite nepotism of the week. Oh. Okay. Any any thoughts on that? I I, I nominate uh, what, Ivanka? Ivanka. She's she's he wants to nominate her. Or the World, world Bank. Bank, the American seat of the world, U.S. seat right, of the world. Because she's Bank. good with numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because she's good with numbers. You know? That's what he said. Um, that, that's my favorite nepotism. You got a better one? Well, just Something a friend. Something about Jared. Oh, Bank no, Fisher. just as, well, it's not nepotism, but it's his friends and cronies. Um, Herman Cain for the Fed. Oh, there you go. That's, <laughs> that's a, my favorite. Uh, maybe that's more important than, you know, than the Ivanka yeah, appointment. Right. Yeah, Because that's going to have an effect. I mean, assuming that he controls the man and he controls the uh, Fed and their setting of interest rates, uh, this could have a well, huge Well, they make effect. their recommendations in the Beige Book, okay? They make recommendations. They don't set the rates. It's the chair that says, I look at all these data points and, you know, we're going to have a little committee. But, yeah. Okay. Well, I, why, am so I not, Herman, I'm not, why am I not comforted by that? Well, you shouldn't be. It's okay. just crazy. <laughs> right. But, you know. <laughs> Okay, what else? We got another category. We uh, close uh, let's see. Wait, the very last one is the, oh, the most destructive to our global relations, and and I thought it was Trump's involvement with the Netanyahu campaign and everything that he's done in Israel. Well, I mean, there's a fair chance they're going to destabilize, or already has destabilized uh, yes, the Middle East. Right. Um, you know, a, a year or two ago. Uh, you could say, look, leave Israel alone, and they are a democracy. They'll find their way. Um, they, they, they vote. They argue. Nobody agrees on anything. Blah, blah, blah. But now what's happened is uh, Net, he supported Netanyahu right. in, in every way, and effectively stepping in. It's like a command influence thing, stepping mm -hmm. in. Um, and he, you know, he shouldn't be doing this. And in this case, uh, it, it may be very myopic to do that because what Netanyahu is doing, and Trump and Netanyahu is doing, is likely to destabilize the yeah. Middle East. And, and, and already right. you can see the storm clouds gathering right. over the West Bank and over Gaza and, and you know, all around Israel. It may, not, it, may not be, it may not yield the kind of security that Netanyahu and Trump are saying that it will yield. Right. So. One last thing is the big lie. And for, for me, it's the WikiLeaks. <laughs> Avoidance <laughs> of knowing anything about WikiLeaks. Although, you know, as we saw during the campaign, hello, WikiLeaks, come on in and show us your email, 30,000 emails. Um, now you know, it's not his thing in life. Now it's not his thing in life. Yeah, and not I don't my know, thing in life. I don't know anything about it. 
<laughs> uh, you're, you're forgetting how many times he said he loved Julian Assange. Of course. Of course. Love. I, oh, hundred plus times. Now he doesn't they, know anything about Julian Assange. Yeah. 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 I mean. All right, anyway. I guess we have amnesia, and he's the only one that doesn't. The bottom line is what, right. what drives us to do this show every week is that it seems right. to be getting worse every week. We are seeing a disintegration. We are. I mean, we're seeing it over time. And I want to make one statement before we close, because we do have to close here. Who is responsible for taking action, you know, to stop him from doing the things that we have reported? Um, so uh, Congress has, has, the House is trying, you know, in their own way. The Senate is not trying. The Senate under McConnell, the Senate right. is, uh, has abused its uh, its, its uh, oath to defend the Constitution very clearly. That will go down in the history books forever and ever about the factors that led to the decline of this country. Um, who is helping us? Who is protecting us? The courts are being, you know, uh, seated with right wing conservatives, and uh, you know, you you can get to the Supreme Court until you go through the. You know, the, the, uh, the, courts, the district right? courts and the circuit courts, and they're being seated with conservatives. So I'm question. not sure that we the people can rely on them. Yeah. No, we I'm cannot. not sure that we the people can rely on the Supreme Court, given all these uh, well, you know, oh, no right-wing conservative appointments. The ultimate responsibility now, as I see it, is the individual citizen that believes in this country. Right. What does he do? Well, what about the, the lawyers? With a pitchfork? I have a there, question. Where's was, the lawyers? That my point. Cynthia. That's my question. Where's the lawyers? The lawyers all swore to defend the Constitution, too. The lawyers all swore and learned how to you know, defend and protect and, and advance the rule of law in this right. country. They should be saying something. I agree. The American Bar should be saying something. Right. The, the Bar Association in every state should be saying something. We haven't seen that That's yet. There point. should be an uprising, uh, a, loud, a loud statement. By, right. by the legal profession in this country. Let's follow that as a thread and see if that happens. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Cynthia Sinclair, Tim Apicella. Thank you, Jay. Trump Week, you Thanks, guys are Jay. great. Thanks so much. See you again. Aloha. All right, aloha. aloha.